Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to today's video, which is the demo video for the brand new Erica Synth's Matrix Mixer. This is a desktop unit, it's built like a tank, nice and chunky and heavy. It's got a pair of quarter inch inputs and a pair of quarter inch outputs in the back, MIDI input for program change. This is the input for the included power adapter and there's a nice power switch on this which you can turn so you can turn it off when you don't want the light show here basically what this is it's the same matrix as in the synthrex which is the synthy inspired synthesizer erica synth has put out recently so this is the desktop version this allows you to use the same kind of idea with your own modular so you have 16 inputs you have 16 outputs the two quarter inch inputs here are normaled and interrupt these two inputs one and two over here. And the two outputs, which I have connected right now to my interface, basically this is my output module right now. These are normaled and interrupt outputs A and B over here. So when you plug in the two quarter inch cables, these are no longer active. And the idea here is just to make connections. Now, obviously this is a added step, so to speak. So it could make things a little more complicated. So the first thing I did is I created a color code with my tendrils cables. We have pink and black for the inputs and gold for the outputs. I find that the tendrils make a more manageable spaghetti in general. And also, since they're right angled, you can write the numbers and letters on the back of them. So it's really easy to see what you need to do on the matrix. You just look at the synth and you say, let's say for example, I want to send FM modulation from the sine wave of the first even VCO to the volt per octave input of the second one. So that's three E. I come over here and I choose three and E and I can press once for full connection, so no attenuation, uh, once again for a little bit of attenuation, and once again for even more attenuation. And then the third time, it uh, turns off, right? With the right encoder, this is sort of a shortcut, it's just on and off. So the synthesizer that I've assembled here for this experiment, in order to be able to quickly make adjustments for each patch that I create here, because the idea is to have many different sounds easily and quickly available without having to repatch the whole synthesizer all the time. So I made a few decisions. For example, the joystick is always the main modulation source because it's very versatile. I can use it as just a manual joystick with motion recording. I can use it as a dual sine wave LFO with joystick control over amplitude and speed, right, frequency. I can do the same with a random voltage and I can record my joystick movements both on sine wave and random voltage. Then I have the Senso Morph here with the keyboard overlay and this is connected to the FH2 which feeds the Morph and translates the MIDI to a gate, a CV and a pressure output which are going to the matrix. What else do I have here? I have two even VCOs with the VCOs a little helper from Takab here in the middle. It gives me a sub octave and ring modulator and noise and some other things. I have the Erica Synth's black spring reverb. The spring tank is inside the case. My filter is the three tom modular Steve's MS-22. My main VCA is the Erica Synth's LPG. Some Duranalog stuff here, of which I'm using the Fold 6, which is a wave folder, also connected to the matrix, and the Contour 1, which is my second envelope generator. The Danny Sound ADSR, which is voltage controlled, is being controlled by the Morphator here by Bifaco. And what I've done is I have each channel controlling one thing on the envelope here. So we have Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. And when I have my crossfader all the way to the left, I have a very snappy percussive sort of envelope. All of all four settings are optimized for that. When I flip it to channel B, you get a pad kind of an envelope with a slow attack, a slow decay, and a slow release. And I can continuously morph between them so I can find sweet spots 
that might work for different sounds as well. This helps me quickly dial in a good envelope for different sounds that I load here. I've made quite a few presets already and this has been working quite nicely. I always know where my modulation is, I always know where my envelope is. That's about it for the patch, I think, for the synth actually, because the patches are actually what we're going to recall from here. So this H column over here is where I've saved the patches that I've made for this particular system. So let's listen to the first one. And uh, if I remember correctly, this is supposed to be a pad. So we'll turn the envelope all the way to side B. I have the pressure of the morph controlling the filter. It's quite a bit of reverb. All that reverb is the spring reverb. The morph is MP, so I have a smooth glide here. Preset 2, this one's supposed to be punchy. Right, I even have a preset here on my FH2 with a arpeggiator. The pressure is affecting the filter. How do I make sure? Look, pressure output from the FH2 is 16. Filter CV input is G. Do I have 16 G? Yep, right here. There you go. And I can go from this very snappy envelope. all the way to a patty like so in fact this can be kind of a pad if I just change to uh, the other preset that's not arpeggiated and we can add some reverb how do I add reverb well reverb is input C so I can just send the output of the low pass gate to the reverb and then one is the output so we can add an attenuated reverb output to both outputs here, left and right. I can make it louder on one side and get some stereo that way. Right? And then do the opposite here. For the actual output, the direct output. And now we get a stereo sound, see? Or the dry sounds a little bit more to the right, to the right. And the reverb is a little bit to the left. And we get a nice long envelope there. pitch band here. So now I like this patch, it's a different patch now, so I'll save it. Boom, saved. Let's recall patch number three here. Now uh, this is a little more weird, experimental. I think there's FM going on here between oscillators. 
and my pressure opens up the wave folder and I think the joystick affects the pitches. There you go. reverb there, a little bit of a stereo effect too. Nice noisy patch. I can change the joystick to a sine wave LFO here. right hand to trigger the sound. In fact, the keyboard also controls pitch, so if I go up higher, I can make these sort of alien insects or birds. Or a random mode here. Maybe a little bit of an R2D2 effect. Let's go back down a couple octaves. Back to joystick mode. Cool. Let's load up a, a new preset. Number four here. nice when you play down low. It really pings that reverb, doesn't it? This would be fun in random mode too. To my finger pressure. So you can hear just the reverb when I don't apply pressure. And pressure opens up the low pass gate. So cool. See, just the reverb there. Fade that in. So nice. Cool beans. Next one, number five here. What do we have? Another one of these noisy, low, rumbly things. Mm 
There's a variation on that previous one. I think this one has pulse width modulation. And folding added. That'd be cool to use with a sine wave here. and the pulse width. And the pressure opens the filter. LFO here works really nice. Let's hear this one arpeggiated. through the patterns here. Some of these are just random stuff or that I thought was cool or even drawings that my daughter made. And you can randomize too by just holding shift and the right pattern button. Right? This is a random pattern right now. 
and it <laughs> it does respond to my controllers. It just uh, it just seems to be going out of one side, so I can just edit that now and make it make it come out of both. A little extreme. Pretty fun though. Let's see another random one. Yeah, a lot of these are rubbish, but look, this is interesting. Stuff you wouldn't really think to patch, you know? If you were actually thinking about it. Another random one. Oh, this one doesn't do anything. There you go. Add some stuff to the outputs. There you go. Say, take a random patch and a starting point too for something. This is kind of cool. Let's go to another random patch. Ooh, cool. Now this one's not responding to any controls. See, I could, you know, very easily now assign them. Wow, this one actually, <laughs> the keyboard's controlling an oscillator, totally by chance. Wow. Interesting, when I let go, what happens? Wow. Who knows what the hell's going on here? <laughs> I guess you could find out. Textures. I love the random feature. It's just fun. Like this is a cool stereo thing. Ah! Yeah, this one doesn't make any sounds. That's nice too. Just silence. Ah! Geiger counter attack. Ah! Random is so harsh. Oh, interesting. What the hell's that? Ah, it's so loud. Oh, this is better. Weird. Looks like pressure from the keyboard control stuff. If you want silence, just load a uh, empty pattern and you get... Oh, silence. Cool, huh? I think my daughter made a couple of drawings here. This is actually a patch. Sounds cool. Some of these sound really cool. Huh, here we go. We have a little heart here. I made that for her. I think this... This is the row that has her stuff. Ah, okay. oh, look at that. That's just a square. Oh, there's a square in the middle. Ah, it's feedbacking crazy. Feedback patches. That's something I haven't tried yet. And you can certainly do easily with this thing. It also just sort of like randomly connects stuff. Ah, help me. No. Oof. Oh, look at this. This one sounds cool. This is the drawing my daughter made. This is like a... This was supposed to be a dinosaur, I think. And there's the heart again. That's it, folks. Hope you liked the video. If you did, hit like, subscribe, ring the bell. I hope you like the Matrix Mixer. I'm certainly chuffed with it, having a lot of fun. It would be useful because you can separate sound design from composition with this thing. You can create like a whole column full of sounds that you like and then just flip through them and write a song. You know, like you can already do in digital synthesizers since the 80s. Anyway, thank you again. See you soon and stay noisy.